Hello, this is Python in Excel, part 22. We are continuing where we left off in part 20, where we ended with this method chain, which produced this data frame. I've made a small change here in that I've removed the row filter from the loc statement, which means we now have all geography types in the result, country, region, division, and state. What we're gonna do is add a new column to the data frame called geog type. That column will have the word state on rows where state is non-zero. On rows where division is non-zero, it will show the word division, region for non-zero regions, and the word country for the row where all three of state, division, and region are zero. Let's start by creating a new Python cell in A5 by hitting this button in the Python editor. We then hit this button to expand the editor and give ourselves some space. The first of these three methods will be to use dataframe.apply to apply a custom function to the data frame that goes row by row and determines the right text to put in a given row based on the values in those three columns. We can start by creating the new column and assigning to it df.apply and some function name, say get geog type, with axis one. This will ensure the apply method moves down the rows and not across the columns. Now we need to create that function. So we'll put def get geog type when we're using apply on a data frame with axis one, the argument for the function is the row of the data frame, so we'll call it R. And the body of the function will be a very simple if statement, checking in turn whether state, division, or region are non-zero, and returning the text corresponding to the first non-zero column. If they're all zero, it will return country. If we have multiple conditions, we use if elif. This is a lot simpler than nesting lots of if statements. It's really like the difference between using the ifs function and nested if functions when writing Excel formulas. Okay, this has correctly assigned the new column according to the logic in the function. This works, but generally speaking, if we can avoid using df.apply, we should. The problem is that it has to step through every row one by one and apply the function. And if the data frame is large, this can get pretty slow. So let's look at method number two. The next method looks like this. We're slicing the data frame using the NE function, this tests whether the data frame is not equal to its argument, in this case zero, then using this IDX max, index max function, which returns the index of the maximum item along an axis. I'm aware that probably sounds a bit cryptic, so let's take a closer look. First, this statement alone creates a data frame that has three columns, state, division, and region. Take a look at this row. This state is zero. The division is non-zero and the region is non-zero. So we know that this row in the data represents a division. Now, if we apply the NE0 method to this data frame, look what happens. The row is now false, true, true. We're using the index max method on this data frame of true false values. On each row, the max is always the true value because true is one and false is zero in a similar way to Excel. So further to that, it's the first column encountered with a true value. So on this row, the max column is the division column, and the index of the max on that row is the word division, because that's the column header. So applying this process to every row ends up with us selecting the column header of the first non-zero column out of the three when considered in reverse order, state, division, region. One problem with this approach, as it is, is that on the first row, all of the three columns are zero. This means that this Boolean array, this array of true false values, is all false. The max of three false, i.e. zero values, is zero, and index max returns the first occurrence of that max from that array, which is the state column. So the country row has ended up with the word state. We can fix this by adding a fourth column to this data frame. That's very simple to do. We can just put assign country equals one. Now, when we use the NE0 method, we always have at least one column in every row that is true. The result being that on the first row, the word country is correctly returned into the new column. I actually really like this way of completing this task. The code is simple to understand, easy to read, and can be thought of as pandas idiomatic. The problem with pandas idiomatic, as many people will love to tell you, is that it tends to be a little slow. So let's look at this third method. This is by far the fastest of the three, and it's fastest because it uses the built-in vectorization and optimization of the NumPy library. Specifically, we're going to use this select method. 
In this method, I've put two placeholders for objects which will control what happens. In this example, conditions is going to be a list with three elements, and each element in that list is a pandas series. Each series is created by testing if a column from the data frame is not equal to zero. Let's take a closer look. Each of the rows in this Excel output corresponds to one of those series in the conditions list of series. If the corresponding row in the data frame has a zero in the state column, then the state series in this list is false. Similarly, if both the state and the division are zero, but the region is non-zero, then we have false, false, true in this list of series. It's these Boolean values that drive what is selected from choices. So let's take a look at choices. Choices is also a list. It has three elements, the same number of elements as conditions, and it's from these elements that the result of the select operation will be chosen. On each row, select takes the position of the first occurrence of true among the three series and selects the item from choices which is at the same position. In many ways, this works very similarly to Excel's filter and XLOOKUP operations in that they are using correlated arrays. Executing that produces this output. This all looks good except for the zero in the first row. We can actually deal with that pretty simply by specifying a value for the default keyword in the SELECT method. And there it is, the default keyword corrects that little problem. If you've made it this far, thank you. There are usually many ways to solve a problem in any programming language. Python is no exception. I do want to mention that each of these approaches is absolutely fine to use, but that context is critical. As a beginner, reaching for data frame apply is the most natural thing in the world, and you shouldn't let anyone make you feel bad about your learning process. It's only with exposure to these other methods that they become available to use, and you only get exposure by exploring. So get out there, explore what can be done, do your own research, go for a brisk walk, eat some dinner, have a great day. Thank you.